Hello, and welcome to TechBytes.io. In this episode, we're going to walk through setting up your virtual Rails development environment with Vagrant. So let's dive in. So we'll start by going to Atlas and looking for Rails 5 boxes. Uh, Atlas hosts the uh, open source public facing uh, Vagrant boxes that have been developed by people for others to use. And uh, TechBytes, we've created a Rails 5 development environment on Ubuntu. So if you type TechBytes into the search folder, or the search section, you can see that uh, we have a Phoenix Ubuntu box, and then there's also the Rails 5 Ubuntu box. And if you click on that, you can see the it provides the instructions on how to use the Rails 5 Ubuntu development, or you know, set up your Rails 5 Ubuntu development server. And that's what we're going to do and walk through during this episode. So we're going to dive into the command line and see how to use, how to do this. So in the command line, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have already. So on the as far as vagrant boxes go, and you do that with typing in the command vagrant box list. We'll run that command, and up comes the one, two, three, four. It looks like I have maybe five or six boxes on this machine, and you can see that the tech bytes rails five Ubuntu boxes on here. Uh, now, you don't need to have it on your machine to get started for your Rails application because when you set up your uh, Vagrant file, you will uh, identify the TechBytes Rails 5 Ubuntu uh, box as the box that you want to use, and Vagrant will pull it down for you and set up the machine. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's uh, go ahead and reset here. And you can see I'm operating inside the Rails folder right now. Uh, so go to whatever folder you would like to operate from or to uh, set up your application and we'll start by creating a uh, a new Rails application. So we'll say uh, Rails new and let's call it, uh, we'll just say Vagrant Trial. How about that? So Vagrant Trial. And we'll go ahead and generate our framework for our application here. All right, so now that our framework has been generated, let's go into our Rails application. So we called that what, Vagrant Trial. We'll CD into our Vagrant Trial app. I'm going to do look at the files we created, and here you can see the directory of our you know our new Rails application. So now, in order to use Vagrant, we're going to add our Vagrant file. And so with that, to create, to generate our Vagrant file, we're going to use Vagrant init, and then we're going to type in TechBytes Rails 5 Ubuntu. And so we're going to initialize this file inside of our Rails directory. And if we look inside our directory again, you can see there's the Vagrant file. It is now listed inside of our application. So let's go into our text editor and take a look at it. Inside our text editor, let's go down to the Vagrant file, which you can see is a lot, should be the bottom file inside of your application. And let's look at the Vagrant file. So we can see that this is a, Vagrant is a Ruby based tool, which is, well, great considering we're using Ruby on Rails in this application for this development. So we don't have to change any languages here. Um, we can see we're using the, this is the second version of Vagrant. We go down and where we had typed in Vagrant init and identified the box, you can see that the, conf the, the configuration line here denotes the box that we had identified, which is the TechBytes Rails 5 Ubuntu, which will pull it from here if we don't have it on our machine, but we already have it on our machine. So in order to get our environment all set up and ready to rock, we're going to go down, we're going to make one small configuration change to our Vagrant file. So if you can't scroll down to the config VM network line and uncomment that out. So backspace and get rid of the hash symbol there so that uh, you bring this line to life as you would. 
So we have config VM network, and that's what we're going to do is we're going to configure our network right now so that our host and guest machines can speak to each other over an open port. So we're going to use the forwarded port func uh, function, and we will type in, we'll use Rails defaults to the use of localhost 3000. So we will use localhost, we will use 3000 as our forwarded port. Hit control save, and as you can, that's what we we've now completed the preparation for the use of our vagrant file uh, for our Rails application. So back in our command line, we will let's bring our uh, virtual machine up. So we will use vagrant up is the easy simple command we use in order to bring our machine to life. And as you can see, it's bringing together our virtual box which is going to host our tech bytes rails 5 ubuntu uh you know prepared operating system uh configured operating system for us and that way we can create a rails 5 server and development environment all right so now that our vagrant box is up we can see that it is complete so let's go ahead and get inside it and we can get we can get inside there by vagrant SSH. So we'll SSH into our Vagrant box, and there you can see we're inside our Ubuntu 14.04 machine, which has Rails on it. And we can check, we can say Rails V and see that's 5.0. And we can run Ruby V and see that we got 2.3 on here. All right. Um, if we want to get down into the other specifics, we can see what version of Node. But we want what we're going to want to do is change directories into our vagrant file and inside the vagrant file is where our application defaults to so the same application that's on your host machine your computer that you are developing your application on is the same file that you can see it's the same file structure the same directory it is also is duplicated inside of this vagrant file so uh, now we want to see if it, how it works and if, how we're operating. And we're going to type in Rails S and I'm going to bind this to 0, .0, 0.0.0. And let's, oh, we have requested, oh, we, yes, no kidding, we have to bundle, right? Sorry, so bundle install all of your the dependencies for your rails application so that you can get everything up and running once you have finished once the bundle has finished let's reset here so we have some more landscape all right, so now let's do Rails S. Let's bring up the server, and I'm going to bind it once again to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0, and hit return. And we can see that our Rails 5.0 point, you know, point 0.1, so that's what I have on my computer, is the dot one version, uh, is up and running. So if I go to my browser on my machine which we'll switch over to I'm going to use Firefox you can use whatever browser you want and if I go to localhost 3000 you can see there's our rails environment our rails machine is up and running and this is reaching out and it's going to the virtual box that we have set up which we're running a Ubuntu Linux environment on there with uh, rails and obviously with Ruby on Rails. So the dependencies that you would need to host your machine, whether you're hosting it in Heroku, DigitalOcean, AWS, or Microsoft Azure, if you're using an Ubuntu box, you would know that it works. So let's go ahead and bring it back down. So now what do we do? So we'll control C out of uh, running our ser Rails server here. And now we'll type in exit into our Ubuntu command line, which is, uh, we've SSH'd into. Now that we're back into our own home computer, we will go ahead and let's check the status. So we say Vagrant 
status will give us the status of the box and you can see that it has it running shows that it is running at the moment and also provides you instructions with how to shut them down so in our case we're going to type in vagrant destroyed because I won't be using this one again however you could type in vagrant suspend and it will simply suspend the virtual machine so that you're not running a you know ultimate processing power over your uh, your laptop or your whatever you're running your machines on and uh, or you can hit vagrant halt to shut it you know to stop it but if you type in vagrant destroy that will go through and it gives you a little warning hit yes and we will destroy the machine now if I want to bring up this machine again uh, in this vagrant application once again it's not that hard you just type in vagrant up and it spins the whole thing back up all over again so you're ready up you're ready to rock and you're up and running with a new vagrant machine every single time and you don't lose the upside is of course you do not lose your code or you have you know from uh, that you've been working on because that's hosted on your laptop thanks for joining me this episode where we created a Ruby on Rails a Rails 5 development environment with vagrant keep on coding and we'll see you next time on TechBytes.io.